Um, I want to pivot a bit to your blog because you wrote, there's something that you really focus on that I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce properly. Is it Winogradsky? Oh, is it, the, yeah. Winogradsky. You, yeah. Can you explain to people what that is, the Winogradsky column, I think it's called? Yeah. So um, a Winogradsky column is a way to grow microbes and um, you can kind of select for certain types of microbes based on the what you supply in the um, environment. And so you grow them in a glass container so you can actually see what's going on. And you, um, and it's so simple because it's just mud, water, and paper, and an egg yolk. And the egg yolks provide sulfur, and the paper provides a carbon source. And um, so then you're kind of selecting for the microbes that can grow on those things. And then they produce colors. And they show up in layers of different colors, and then you can kind of tell what's growing based on the color pattern or the colors themselves. And um, what I love about it is just because it's like it's pretty, and it's um, and of course they're not all pretty, but <laughs> some of them take a lot longer to grow, and some of them are faster. Um, but I, I think it's just amazing that you can actually see the microbes growing. And so the blog post is um, a window into the microbial world because to me it is, it's like looking into this world that you normally can't see. You look at mud and it's, it's like brown usually, you know, there, you just don't see very many colors and you don't realize that all of those microbes are in there and they can produce those colors, but they just haven't been given this you know, very specific environment in which to do that. And so that's what the Winogradsky column does. And it's usually kind of tall. And so then at the top, you have more oxygen. At the bottom, you have less oxygen. So then you're selecting for microbes based on if they can grow with or without oxygen. And um, so I just think it's really fun to get to see this visual aspect of microbiology that's usually not there because microbes are, most of them are invisible. I think this is something I want to try to do this summer because <laughs> it seems really cool. I mean, it, it's okay for a non-scientist to do that, obviously, right? Oh, absolutely. For sure. I, I hope that lots of non-scientists do it. Um, and I love hearing about any like whenever people tell me that they've tried it for, for the first time or you know um some people some scientists will say that they shared it with their family and <laughs> I just think that's so neat but yeah it's totally safe yeah and could you like could you like because you said the microbes depending on the, the type of microbes they, they create different colors is it like the type of mud that you should select for or like what should you change up if you want to get different colors Mm, okay, that's a good question. So you can actually, so I described the very basic Winogradsky column, and you can actually add in other ingredients that will, you know, enhance the growth of certain microbes. Um, and so that's one way to do it. And then the mud, yeah. And then also how much light they get. But the um, the mud is... I actually, I feel like I got really lucky with the Winogradsky column that I made because I went looking for some good mud and came across, <laughs> there was a pond that had, um, I saw a metallic sheen on the, the water. And I think a lot of people don't realize, and I didn't even know until like the past few years that that metallic sheen is actually an indicator of bacteria that can um, oxidize the metals. And so they, um, it tells you that certain types of microbes basically are growing in that environment, but then they, they actually, um, those metals kind of are the indicator that they're there. And I noticed that and I thought, I wonder if I put that in, that mud in the column, like, will I see some of those colors or will I see, you know, some of that stuff come out? And, um, I think that is why, like part of why my column kind of turned out the way that it did it had like this really orange layer, which is iron oxidizing bacteria. And, um, 
that was really exciting. And it did kind of have like a metallic sheen that was like on the, um, on the jar itself as well. And, um, so yeah, you can kind of switch up where you get them at. I've heard of people using ocean water and sand and stuff like that. And, um, there's just so many different variations of the Winogradsky column that then gives you different, you know, different microbes growing in different color patterns. And, and I think one of the biggest things that I want to emphasize though, is that it's just, it doesn't matter if your Winogradsky column looks like the pictures or the, the color guides that you see out there where they kind of show you like the layers, they're really showing you more like the potential of the different types of layers you might see. It doesn't mean you're going to see all of them and it doesn't mean that they're going to be arranged in that way perfectly. So it's, um, it's just kind of like whatever you get is awesome. (laughs) You know, it's like, it's exciting no matter what, like, and it takes time too. That's another thing that can be kind of frustrating to people. They want to see it fast. And so, um, but giving them a little bit more light can help with that, I think. 